makes a wedding fun as a guest? Story one, open, bar, edit. Ah, I see you've got that covered. Well, then my friend had a photo booth at her wedding reception. It was set up so that guests could take photos of themselves throughout the night. And those prints were part of her wedding photo album. It was cute. Also, I had a friend that did a cake buffet instead of a single wedding cake. Less expensive and more fun for guests. Story two. I've been to a couple wedding receptions where after everyone gets their food, some unpleasant person starts to put it all away, and everyone only gets one serving. When you have tons of leftover food, leave it out so people can help themselves throughout the night. Story three. Put disposable cameras on each table so your guests can take their own candid and posed pictures. You get to keep them, and they get to feel like they added something to your wedding album. People like Issei games, too. If you are outdoors, maybe have horseshoes or boshi ball or beanbag toss games for people to pass some time. I haven't seen that at a wedding before, but sounds like fun. Story 4. Everyone will say open bar, but the real key is to provide transportation for your guests to get to and from the wedding. If you do that, None of your guests will have to worry about getting home, so they'll be in better moods. Also, with an open bar, try to steer away from liquor. It tends to get guests away from the happy drunk to the destructive, pukey drunk. Beer and wine is perfect. Story 5. I used to work for a catering company on and off for about 10 years, as well as a banquet server in a hotel, so I have been to over 300 receptions, give or take, and I have had a wedding of my own as well as attended a bunch as an invited guest. With receptions, it seems like so many are so expected. Same old announcements, band, DJ activities, food, all of that. Here's just some of my faves that have stood out. Cop wedding, the groomsmen and bridesmaids all switched clothes, as best they could. And the girls got on the shoulders of the men for the wedding party entrance to lights and sirens. It set the tone of the night. Everyone was there to have fun. My wedding was on my in-law's front lawn, which was secluded, intimate, cheap, and amazing. Find ways to costs in all areas so you can splurge on others, like on the photos and the honeymoon. My cousin had the most awesome DJ ever. He made every guest participate and shake it in the dance floor. He had funny signs for unrehearsed, synchronized dancing of the groomsmen for the new bride on tippy toes while she blushed. There was also a 300-plus conga line with even the grandmas up and laughing. What also made it great is that the bride and groom took time to personally thank each guest for coming, went to every table for hugs. It was a special, special evening. Last song of the night at one reception I worked, the DJ played the requested song of the groom as he asked everyone to gather on the dance floor. By that time, everyone was happy and sloshed. The DJ asked everyone to form a big circle and hold hands while he played Don McLean's American Pie, which I guess had a lot of sentimental value for the family. Grown men had tears and rested heads on shoulders. Everyone hugged at the end. It was adorable and moving, I am sure, memorable for them. One super ritzy, everyone was head to toe in Gucci, no joke. Vietnamese reception employed a photo booth, and it was genius. A lot of fun can be fostered with an open bar, and good planning with a super pro DJ band, and planning with friends and family for surprises on each other. Make sure you communicate with your photographer. We told ours to act like they were on safari and get tons of candids, and you'll have those memories forever. Congrats to you both, and remember to have fun, and eat as much as possible when you can. You'll be too busy during most of the reception. Edit. And I have seen some pretty moving pics with music montages, although you may think it cheesy now, a wedding is the time to be cheesy, so you might want to ask moms for baby pics and stuff for some of that. And do whatever makes it personal and unique to you guys, and not just another cookie-cutter event. Story 6. Went to a reception last year where they had a photo booth with lots of costumes and hats, etc., and they printed out sets of photos for you for free, as many as you wanted, and they save all of them and send to the bride and groom. Same reception, also had two hot dog carts set up right outside the reception hall as soon as the reception was over. With unlimited free hot dogs for us drunk folks, best wedding ever. Story 7? Just a heads up, I used to develop photos at Walmart. I highly suggest not using the one-time use cameras and leaving them on every table. They are overpriced reused cameras. They have used batteries and used film canisters. The film is new, but it's usually 200 speed 11 exposure cow film. If you want to preserve the wedding on film, use a camcorder and film people giving you their best wishes. Also, if you hire a photographer, don't forget a copyright release from them. Otherwise, stores will not let you develop you wedding photos because then the photographer can sue them for making a profit off their copy-protected photos. Story 8. I went to an amazing wedding last summer. 
Ceremony was fraught with cheesy stuff that people who weren't the parents of the couple probably found boring, but they gave us all bubbles to play with during. Bubbles turn out to be surprisingly fun when you are stuck in a seat for an hour. The bar was open right after the ceremony and there were snacks. So for those of us not involved in photos, not a problem. Dinner was awesome, and right after dinner there was a family-friendly type of band that played dancing music. After an hour of that, a full-on Brazilian band with like ten super hot dancers in skimpy carnivalesque outfits came out and got everyone dancing and doing conga lines. Sounds a bit crazy, and it was, but so much fun. Then, by the time that was over, the kids and old folks took off and they had a good young DJ who played until the wee hour. There were goofy hats to be had and plenty of booze and snacks. I have rarely partied that hard. Story 9. You could have your mother whip out an awesome joke. At my wedding, soon to be husband, trying to push the ring onto my finger. Me. Push harder. Audible for all. My mother. That's what she said. Also audible. All. Laughter. And a good time was had by all. Story 10. We all lit ginormous sparklers and created a tunnel for the new couple to run under at the end of the last reception I went to. The same wedding had a lottery scratcher at each place setting. The person next to me won $80. Story 11. For the love of God. Quality. Live music. Good live musicians have a way energizing the dance floor better than any booze or canned pop music. Make your reception more than just a good night at typical DJ club scene. Story 12. Just don't take it too seriously. Treat it as a celebration and have a of fun. Don't hold it in a church. There is nothing worse than sitting in a hot church in hot July in a hot suit. People will probably fall asleep. Hold it outside, even next to the church if you must. Send everyone to reception in limos. Everyone loves limos. Have photographers ready to take photos of all your guests as you get yours taken. They can be wacky and stupid, and you can give them out as thank you cards or something. It would be a good way for people to unwind after sitting through the ceremony. Be funny, not stuffy. Story 13. I was just in a wedding this past weekend, and a good DJ could not be more important. This dude was the man. He eased into the music with some smooth jazz during the meal. Then he had all of us in the wedding party go out and get people on the dance floor. And he started the real dancing off with I Got a Feeling, which meant that everyone in the room was out there going crazy and they stayed the whole night. It was a blast, one of the most fun experiences I've ever had. Other weddings I've been to had entirely dead dance floors due to the lackluster DJ. Story 14. Have heavy hours, divorce buffet style, gets people mingling and talking, and also gives people more choice for food they might like. Don't just pick things you like. Pick things that are very different. Make sure there is something hearty that is vegetarian. Maybe something spicy. Something white meat and something red meat. Your guests will be happier with the choices and they'll have to get up and walk through the line and talk to each other. Also, have a shorter guest list and invite people you know and like. I've played tons of weddings. I'm a cellist in a quartet. And there's such a difference in a bridegroom at a celebration of their marriage with close friends and family and a bridegroom at a big, stuffy affair with their parents' business partners and second cousins they've never met. Invite people who support you and make you happy. Your guests will appreciate it as much as you do. Story 15. The best weddings I've been to all had short, meaningful ceremonies, excellent appetizers and music, both DJ and live, open bar, transportation to and from hotels, and a terrific sense of humor. Photo booths, silly but poignant favors, video tributes to the couple, lots of little kids dancing their asses off and then falling asleep on a pile of coats, but mostly a genuine sense of love and gratitude from the bride and groom towards their guests. And some form of booze fountain, definitely a booze fountain. Story 16. I recently went to my aunt's wedding, which was more under budget, but still happened to be a major success. The open bar is key. What is more key is having shots lined up for the people entering the reception hall. Drunk people equal sign happy people, especially if you get cheesier facepalm moments that may ruin the setting for some. Activities, we had a wedding planner coordinator hold the microphone and basically call play-by-play -play between dinner dancing games, etc. You can loads of people involved in a scavenger hunt of wedding articles, and people get eliminated if they are the last to bring that article. Big hit with drunks. Again, drinking and winning something is key. Bottles of personalized wine farm the wedding, Thanks for coming to so-and-so wedding on such-and-such -such date, yada, yada, yada. More games, playing musical chairs or dance, offs, so epic. Have people come up to contest and have the audience cheer for your winners. Hope your wedding is a blast. All I gotta say is that you can never have too much dancing, especially since everyone's loaded, hell ye. Story 17. If you have lots of kids going, 
give them each a disposable camera and a treasure hunt list, get a picture of the prettiest dress, get a picture of your favorite person, get a picture of the bride, etc., and then hand out goodie bags when you collect the cameras. Not only will it keep the kids occupied, but you might end up with some cute pictures. Or if you're rich, set them up in a room with snacks and a babysitter and a projector screen. Story 18. Forget steaks and seafood and all that jazz. No one ever does it right, no matter how hard you try. Here's what you do instead. Have Papa John's or whoever cater your meal. The pizzas stay relatively hot for a long time, and no one complains about it. We had a friend do a complete pizza buffet and everyone loved it. No one complained, and everyone from old fogies to young children kept going back up for more. Story 19. If you are concerned about the photo gap, can I suggest having your photos taken before the ceremony? It's unconventional, and it means that the bride and groom have to meet up before the ceremony, so you don't get the whole gasp, she's so beautiful moment as she first walks down the aisle. But having the photos out of the way means that the party follows straight after the ceremony. No gap, pure awesome. Story 20. The pictures between the ceremony and reception should be as short as possible. Don't leave people hanging forever wandering around wondering what's going on. Just get it over with quickly and everyone will be much happier. Also a band if you can afford it. Bands with good attitudes are awesome and always get people to dance. Story 21. Oof, I can say, I hated that part of my wedding. Really, the photo session was mind-numbing to me. You have to do it, but oh no. Of course, the free booze is a win. Also, decent music. I mean, decent music if you hire a DJ. Make sure he or she's not a tool. The photo booth idea is a lot of fun. Have heard of it, but never done it. If you have a friend who is just ridiculous... Legitimately funny, not just the retarded kid you enjoy laughing at. Use them to kind of mingle and talk to people, keeping them engaged, etc. A whole other photographer to the crowd and guests is also nice, grabbing them in groups, etc. We got everyone who attended ours in one big group. Is actually one of our favorite picks of the day. Last choice would be a bouncy house. Cow, everyone loves a bouncy house. Story 22. I've been to a couple of weddings where they offered pizza or nachos or soft pretzels, at about 10.11 p.m. after everyone has started drinking and getting hungry again, I was sober but pregnant, so I enjoyed it at both of the weddings I went to. Story 23. My wife and I served breakfast at 7 p.m. Anyone can do the chicken eggplant thing. However, off your guest option of Belgium waffles, egg burritos, and a score of fruit. Most caterers do be fast for the same price as dinner anyway, so might as well serve stuff PPL like Story 24. If you're in Portland, let a random Reddit lemming come. I'm going to be unoriginal and list my favorites from the posts thus far. Good DJ, no garter force dancing chicken dance, macarena pop dance nonsense, photo booth caricaturist, basket of flip-flops for the ladies, pizza buffet, fancy cow as spendy gets messed up up anyways, hold it at a hotel arranged transportation so people can get really drunk, cake buffet instead of really expensive single cake, short photo session, small gap between wedding and reception, absolutely no long speeches, MC with timer perhaps, no priests, religious nonsense, choreographed first dance, less awkward for groom, more cute for family watching. Story 25. As a wedding photographer, great music, open bar, and most of all a relaxed and excited bride and groom. Honestly, the best weddings are the ones where the bride and groom are having a blast and celebrating the whole event. It wears off on everyone, and it is infectious. If you're going to do a photo booth, Oriental Trading Company has a ton of cheap props. Story 26. If kids are coming to the wedding, have an area, preferably a room in the back with easy access, set up for kids to play in, with a video game system and some age-appropriate toys, some soccer balls to play outside with, etc., so the parents can relax. Story 27. Invite the friend who will bring enough joints to share around with everyone behind the venue. The cake at a reasonable hour. 30 minutes after dinner service? Good time. Four hours after dinner service? Come on in, we want cake. If it's outdoors, provide parasols so we pale folk don't burn. Actually be a couple that the guests are happy for. A wedding where I'm happy to see two people in love get married is much better than a wedding where you know a divorce will be imminent within five years. Story 28. Flare bartending. For an hour or two after dinner during the fun part of the night, hire a flare bartender or two to man the bar. If you're in a well, populated city, you shouldn't have an issue finding them at the local dive bars, etc., and they add a lot of fun that can be appropriate and relatively cheap. Story 29. No speeches. Short toasts are good, though. It can be fun if you come up with some kind of silly participatory thing that guests have to do if they want you to kiss during the reception. That is a I've been to a wedding where guests would have to come up to the front, with a partner, and demonstrate the kiss first. Know your audience for that one, though. Story 30. 
If you come up to me and tell me I should dance because it's your special day, this will be the last time we see each other for a long while. Also, don't do the whole garter thing. That cow's flipping creepy. Story 31. Have bubbles that don't pop without force floating around that contain candy vapor, and whenever a guest wants a toke, they stick a straw in the bubble and inhale. Failing that, um, rock'em zock'em robots? Story 32. Having been to a million weddings, good booze, good food, do something fun, snacky between the wedding reception. Best thing I've seen were glasses with tomato soup, a tiny triangle of grilled cheese over the top. Friendly wedding party. Bonus points if they talk to the out-of-town people who know very few people. Photo booth. Seriously. Gets better as people drink more. They can be done on a budget good music system. Either DJ, or if you go the route of iPod, make sure it's well man done well. Story 33. Good food and booze. Please do not do anything odd with the food. Dishes you might think are interesting or gourmet. Stick with simple classics. Booze skip on the cheap stuff. No one wants a horrid hangover BC. They drank Dark Eyes vodka all night. Bad DJ fastest way to clear the room. Story 34. Good music and food. Also helps if, as a gust, I know other people there besides the bridegroom. I don't know if you can do anything about that last part, so stick to good music and food. Also congrats. Story 35. I hate nothing more than being herded into a reception and plonked down at a table where you spend the rest of the night. At our reception, we had starters served while people stood and mingled inside or outside on a balcony overlooking the harbor. We had a small band play jazz as background music. Definitely no DJ. We sat people at tables only once the main course was brought out. Tables occupied less than half the room. We've had comments that it was the best wedding people have been to. Edit. Oh yeah, everyone remembers the food. Ours was awesome. Story 36. The people make the reception what it is. I've gone to weddings for friends I've known for years, but didn't know anyone else there. Met some new people, and it was nice and everything, but the most fun is where I know people. Long-time friends, those I haven't seen in a while. A reception doesn't have to be big. Just have ample booze, a good DJ, and great friends. Story 37. The timing of the song's events. Some try to do everything all at once. Father-daughter and mother-son dances, bouquet toss, cake cutting, etc. all at the beginning. It feels rushed. Also, plenty of people around your age as guests makes a difference. Story 38. It helped keep my sanity before my wedding. But there is something they say on there that is very important. Four crucial things. One. Good food. Two. Good people. Three. Good music. Four. Open bar. I had these at my wedding. Didn't concentrate on the little things. And everyone had fun. Story 39. Booze is. But music people can dance to all night is definitely important. And make sure you have the A.C. cranked on the dance floor for the sweaty people. And not on the food, or the old folks will complain the eats sucked. If you want to go a step up, don't just walk in as bridegroom to your reception. Pick up a dance number with the party, thriller, and it'll put people in a good mood. Good luck. Story 40. I went to a wedding that had a few disposable cameras on each table at the reception. And many of the guests left the cameras so afterwards, the bridegroom got to get the film developed and have a cool collection of pictures taken by all their family and friends, as well as notice some things they might have noticed. And the guests got to pick up a camera and have fun shooting pictures of whatever they wanted without having to be pressured to take good pictures, since everyone was taking them, as well as a professional. Edit. Forgot. Same wedding, the bride and groom took a picture together before the wedding, in blue jeans and white t-shirts, and got it blown up matted on a huge white background, so there was a thick border then had all their guests sign it as they saw fit throughout the night. Story 41, 1. A DJ who knows more songs than just Chicken Dance, Macarena, and my own voice speaking. And please, please do not just plug in an iPod or let your 12-year-old nephew try to choose songs individually on his laptop between grabbing extra dinner rolls. 2. Speeches that are not more than two, three men's each. The best wedding I went to. The MC had a timer. Three. Lots of time for me to mingle with friends. The best way I've seen this done is a stand-up tapas-style dinner. You know, more than just shrimp and crackers. Tons of food so nobody leaves hungry. But you are not stuck at a table of eight. Ten people you don't know, waiting for the long speeches and awkward skits to end, so that you can go across the room and hang out with the people you'd rather be spending time with. Four. Candy buffet at the side of the room. The above can negate the need for an open bar. A great alternative to open bar is everyone gets two drink tickets. That way you pay for a few drinks for your guests, but you don't pay for people to get. Story 42. Most weddings I've been to have served snacks and had cocktails between the ceremony and the reception. 
Also, one thing that makes it fun is a good DJ. For real, dancing at weddings is so fun, but the DJ needs to play good music and not serve as an entertainer comedian lead the crowd in lame group dances. I just want to get my groove on. Story 43. My cousin did a wedding that was small, had an open bar, and was stocked with choice brews and top-shelf booze. They are a very new-age couple got married in a warehouse, which doubled as the reception hall, and one of their friends was the one who married them. Honestly, the best part I thought of, though, was that they specifically said they didn't want any young children. It really let all of the adults have less to worry about, and we all loose. My advice, though, is that fun is contagious, so do what you want to do. If you're having a great time, your closest friends and family will have a great time as well. Story 44. If possible, without offending your religious preferences, keep the ceremony short. Make the reception casual and let it start without you. You can have an entrance with a particular song and an introduction, but they can have already started enjoying the free booze, and people can enjoy themselves and leave freely, rather than there being cheesy events like extra superfluous speeches or some bizarre slideshow of pictures of your relationship. Story 45. Congrats on the wedding. I hope it's a wonderful day for your and your so. I'm getting married in August, so I'm going to scour the comments for some ideas. Also, we had a photo booth set up, past tense. We had to cancel it due to lack of funds and photographer canceling to be used during the cocktail hour, a.k.a. in between hour and reception. And we are having a 1950s style candy bar being set up as party favors and entertainment as well as... I'm looking forward to these. Story 46. One I was at a while ago had a lovely break between ceremony and reception where everyone sat outside in the garden on the hotel we were at and had tea, coffee, sandwiches, champagne, scones, etc., while the couple got pictures taken. While a three-piece band, guitar, double bass, and box drum went around to the different groups sitting down taking song requests, they did very good renditions of Bohemian Rhapsody and Poker Face. I see a lot of people saying photo booth. I've seen couples leaving sets of disposable cameras left on the tables for the guests to take their own pictures for the couple. Story 47. Short, flipping, speeches, speeches cow me. My wedding had three. My pro-in-law reading out apologies from relatives that couldn't make it. Father-in-law saying his bit and me and my wife thanking everyone more time for eating and dancing. Story 48. My sister and bro-in-law had the ceremony and reception at an aquarium. Guest got to go see the exhibits and hang out at the shark tank while waiting. All I know is at my wedding I want horseshoes and beanbag toss. Story 49. Short ceremony. I don't need to hear a full-length sermon. Make sure the cake actually tastes good. I don't care how pretty it is if it's dry and gross. Set up games for people to play like cornhole, huh, checkers, whatever. Have bowls of different candy for people to eat. Story 50. Have a bunch of disposable cameras on the tables in the reception hall. Guests are invited to take pictures of each other as a wedding gift to the new couple. Plenty of food on a buffet. Non-alcoholic drink stations set up all around for the folks who don't want to stand in line at the bar. Cupcakes decorated similar to the wedding cake. A tray can be delivered to each table rather than people standing in line for cake. Story 51. I think the main thing with having a good wedding is to make it fun. I've been to some formal, boring weddings where I'm quite eager to go home after an hour. It's sure to be remembered fondly if your guests are having the time of their lives. It's a celebration, not a in white formal dance. Story 52. One of the best weddings I've ever been to had two separate sides. One for old crotchety guests, children, and business associates of the parents. They sat at assigned dinner tables, talking business and family. The other side had all the young, hip folks, couches and comfy chairs, standing room tables and the occasional sit-down table, unassigned. It was awesome. No one on the youth side was forced to make conversation with someone's 14-year-old cousin or explain their drinking habits to a stodgy uncle. Story 53. Shenanigans. Have you ever heard of the tradition of trying to get everyone in a picture with some object? I never did. My new brother-in-law's picked up a big pickle and played with it the whole time. Example. Story 54. Either the bride or groom doesn't show up. I'm dying to be at a wedding like this. I don't care if it's hot, with a pay bar and a bunch of screaming kids. I want to experience every single second past the ceremony time where it goes from what's taking so long to do you think to I don't think so and so is going to show up to the announcement telling everyone that it ain't gonna happen. Story 55. The perfect wedding, one. Very short ceremony. I'm talking 10 minutes here. No praying, no singing, no guff. Exchange vows, kiss, and GTFO. Two. Take your time with the photos. Guests can have a chat and a breathe or something. 
Provide tea and coffee if you want them to hang around. 3. Let your guests go do something else for a few hours. Most of them will want to get changed and grab lunch before heading out to the reception. 4. Open bar at the reception if you can afford it. 5. Get a good DJ that has a variety of stuff, not some guy who only has techno or some other crappy music. Inform them that their priority is to take requests, not to keep the dance floor full. 6. Nibbles. Don't have a big fancy dinner, just alcohol and lots of nibbles, cheese on a stick, sandwiches, sausage rolls, etc. 7. If you get a DJ who will do karaoke, Rick roll the guests.